just another Southern California neighborhood, a place where local wildlife occasionally comes down from the hills. There are no signs that a dozen years ago, this section of Glendale was a scene of an inferno. The College Hills fire, one of the worst in the state's history, took out 67 homes. Many assumed it was arson, but at the time, that wasn't the main issue. There was a great deal of controversy in the town concerning the response to the fire, and the administrators appeared to me to focus on that and allow the crack arson investigator to conduct what they believed to be a thorough investigation. As it turned out, that was not the case. L.A. County Deputy District Attorney Michael Cabral says there was never a real investigation by Glendale's arson specialist. I think everybody operated under the assumption he was doing his job and doing it appropriately. In fact, authorities say the man responsible for investigating fires was also the man who was setting them. His name is John Orr. You know, we have a, a fire setter setting thousands of fires, probably the most prolific fire setter certainly of the century, if not of the country's history. South Pasadena Battalion Chief Phil Gorell saw Orr's work up close back in 1984 when he was a young firefighter new to the job. Suddenly we got dispatched to a, uh, a fire at Oley's, which Oley's is one of the biggest buildings in town, and uh, we, we certainly don't get a lot of big fires in town. And I was given uh, search and rescue, so I went and opened the door, went into the building, and when I got inside, it was, as you would imagine, hell would be. Everything was just fully engulfed. There's no way that somebody could have been alive in there. 17-year-old high school senior Jimmy Satina was one of two employees at Ole's Hardware who died that evening. A two-and-a-half-year-old boy and his grandmother were also killed. At the time, investigators ruled out arson, but they were wrong. Authorities say the Ole's fire was the work of John Orr. Gorell remembers seeing him there. It, it would make sense that the arson investigators in the area, as soon as they heard about this fire, w would come and, and take a look and... Uh, um, you know, give, give their advice and, and check things out. And so it wasn't a surprise to see him. Uh, it was surprising to see him so quickly. Orr was well known in the area and Glenn Lucero knew him. Lucero, a Los Angeles arson investigator, was part of the team that finally arrested Orr in 1991. With a firefighter turned bad, you'd have to expect that the person was a very intelligent and crafty sociopath to be able to live this type of life for so long without being detected. At the time of his arrest, John Orr had been with the Glendale Fire Department for 17 years. He was tried and convicted and has been behind bars ever since. But his story has sparked some new interest in the form of a best-selling book from legendary crime author Joseph Wambaugh and an upcoming HBO movie with actor Ray Liotta playing the part of the arsonist fireman. Inhaling smoke short circuits the brain. It's giving John Orr more than his 15 minutes of fame. Pasadena reporter Howard Brewer says he's surprised at all the new interest in John Orr. But author Joseph Wambaugh says it's no mystery. He finds the story compelling. He spoke to Orr in prison about the fires and about the novel that Orr wrote after the Ole's Hardware fire. Well, here's where fact and fiction uh, merge. John Orr's character in his novel, Points of Origin, is angry because a fire he set at a place exactly like Ole's home center in Pasadena that killed several people uh, was deemed an accidental fire, as was Ole's fire. Ole's book backfired. It reinforced suspicions that he had set the Ole's fire and helped authorities make the case. But despite being convicted in both federal and state court, Orr maintains his innocence. In 1995, he spoke to the PBS program Nova. Determining the fire cause and origin is, is fun to investigators, and it's, it's nice to have a lab sample come back saying, yes, this was gasoline set in this area, even though you couldn't smell it. But uh, the, real, the real thrill of it is the pursuit of the suspect himself and identifying him, uh, even when you have very little to go on. That, that's where the ego factor comes in. You know, I'm smarter, I'm better. I can set all these fires right in front of all your noses, and you don't know who I am. In the end, a fingerprint was Orr's undoing. Authorities found it while they were investigating an attempted arson in Bakersfield. When we first got the fingerprint and it came back identified to John Orr, um, we didn't believe it. We thought, well, how, he must have somehow in, in his teachings or travels or something stopped in and, and 
complicated the case by somehow coming in contact with uh, the piece of paper. Orr traveled throughout the state for fire service conferences, but it turns out he also made use of those conferences as an opportunity to set fires along the way. Most cr criminals don't look at a Thomas Guide or a map book to establish where their crime spree is going to end. They just keep going and going. Deputy DA Michael Cabral says there was a reluctance on the part of many investigators to think that it could have been one of their own. There was a lot of hints out there and a lot of, you know, if I only had followed through on my hunches, we might have solved this. And I think that was a big problem, that people, a lot of the responses were, were that, you know, he's a member of law enforcement. He couldn't have possibly do these types of things. Orr is now in prison for life. Since he's been put away, the kinds of fires he was involved in have dropped off sharply. But the statistics in both types of fires that he was most um, infamous for setting have dropped tremendously. I've never seen a tremendous drop in, in percentage of fires like that. Does this weekend's HBO movie break any new ground? Not really, if you talk to the parties involved. Or still professes his innocence, but those who sent him to prison say the case against him is ironclad.